own system. Uh, THC stops the clear looking proteins turning into these clumpy white chunks of protein. And then finally, THC improves the function of mitochondria, which would be like improving the, uh, the grade of your gasoline. It, it makes the mitochondria function better. It's like having a better motor. Uh, next slide. So acetylcholine, this, we've been talking about neuro, uh, uh, neurotransmitters throughout this. These are these messengers between that gap. In, in Alzheimer's, the one that we're concerned about is acetylcholine. This is the chemical messenger that we use for the memory and for executive functions, making decisions. So it's, it's just like dopamine or serotonin, it's another one of these uh, neurotransmitters. Um, so we need a lot of this to have a functioning brain, and as we damage the, the neurons, we have less and less acetylcholine. And so we don't make memories as well. We don't make decisions with enough information as we do. And we have plenty of this in our way. Next. Next. Another uh, issue to know about before I think it's how we're going to use cannabis is to know that there's a blood-brain barrier. So the, there are linings in the blood cells that stop chemicals and drugs getting into our brain. So that 99% of the medicines, the FDA approved medicines that we take, only 1% gets into the brain. The other 99% doesn't do anything at all for Alzheimer's. Five different drugs that are available, every single one. We take that tablet, 99% of it does nothing to go on our urine. Only 1% of it is able to make it past the blood brain barrier. THC and CBD, because they mimic natural substances in our, our body, there's actually a transport mechanism in the blood-brain barrier to move it quickly. So um, most of it ends up in the brain. That's why we only need to take a little tiny bit of this dose because most of it's going to absorb and get stuck to neurotransmitters, uh, the receptors in our brain. Next slide. So all of the medications that are currently available are on these horrible words at the top there, so they call inhibitors. inhibitors. There's the five brand names. Again, only 1% of this medicine ever makes it into our body. And none of these medicines actually treat the condition. They are only covering the symptoms. And they only work for about 6 to 12 months, at which time the body stops responding to them. So this is about the most inadequate treatment for a condition that you can come up with. Um, but this is what we have. These are the five that we have. <coughs> They have no impact at all on, on the disease, on the plaques, on what's going to happen years later in your life. They just make you feel a little better for about six to twelve months. So let's go on to the next one. In addition to cannabis having actual effects with stopping the progression of Alzheimer's, as an aside, it also affects those those other symptoms that are common with, Al with Alzheimer's. When people get this, and especially when they get into uh, later stages, they get anxiety, depression, they won't go to sleep at night, uh, they can be agitated, they lose weight. All of these things that I just mentioned are improved with cannabis, unrelated to the fact that it's also treating the condition. Also, people with uh, Alzheimer's tend to be older and have, have arthritis, chronic pain, pain and autoimmune diseases. So at the same time, we're impacting those. And, and cannabis medicine works hand in hand with all the FDA approved medications. So they, they work synergistically doing the same kind of thing, trying to increase the amount of acetylcholine. So um, for a variety of reasons, cannabis is a perfect medication for Alzheimer's. Uh, next slide. Um, so let's get to dosing. Um, when it comes to dosing, because CBD has almost no side effects, and, and we could have an, an argument whether there's some side effects solely in the kind of dosing that we're going to use for Alzheimer's patients, I can say fairly comfortably more than any other medication I can think of, there's no side effects. You can sell CBD oil next to olive oil you know, at the grocery store. That's how safe it is. So when it comes to dosing, it's all about the THC. Um, we, we try and start with a once-a-day dose at bedtime, 
and usually an edible, and an edible because it will, it takes a while to come on, but it will stay uh, and work for six hours. So, um, and also if it is, if there are some side effects with balance, coordination, or memory, you won't care because you're sleeping. So it's a bedtime dose for Alzheimer's. We can go up to three times a day daily dosing, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But generally, with most patients, we can get to the dosing we need with that bedtime uh, at all. Or, or tincture, and anything that goes through your, your mouth, except for vaporizing. <laughs> okay, so um, it doesn't matter what type of medicine you take, or when you take it with Alzheimer's, because it's such a long half-life in our brain. It's three to four days. I, I take vaporizer right now, a THC and CBD, the half-life on my neurons is three to four days. So it varies. So we just want a little bit of extra tone, cannabis tone, constantly in our brains. Next page. Um, so adverse side effects. We've heard this, it's very safe, there's no fatalities. People, especially the older population that you're using uh, with Alzheimer's, are worried about getting high. That's the biggest concern, that of getting uh, you know, dependent or addicted. So uh, we're gonna start very slow, so they don't get high. But that, will, that will stop a lot of these patients. If they get high, you can give too much medicine, just one time. Uh, they're worried about being a drug addict and you know, madness. But this is an older population. They grew up and those movies were out with madness. Okay, so we keep the, the dose of THC low, and um, I'll show you how we can add CBD throughout the day, just through a, a CBD vaporizer pen. Uh, so you can add extra CBD going on in your body very safely. It's just having an anti-inflammatory effect, probably somewhat slightly mood elevating effect, taking CBD throughout the day with a vaporizer, but uh, there's no THC in there. Um, we, we talked about the other side effects that I think was adequately discussed, the, psych the issue of psychosis, the issue of dependency. We're just not seeing it. When we use uh, cannabis medicines in this manner as, as, as therapy, as, uh, we're not seeing these problems. Most of the studies that talk about psychosis or addiction, dependency, were done uh, with recreational grade marijuana for you know, people taking it every day to get high which is a lot more THC than we're gonna be using. So when you're not getting enough, very much THC in your body, the chance of the psychosis and the dependency is slim to know. Next slide. Um, we, and we heard about this earlier, if you are using a lot of THC, you, you can develop this tolerance. Well, we're using very, very low levels of THC and we're not uh, creating the tolerance effect. Um, these are some of the things I just discussed. This, this, is, this is science that you're getting dependent. Uh, when it's affecting your life, when you, when you persist the desire to stop taking it, you still feel like you're taking it. All the same things we see with any other dependency, alcohol, all other goods. Next slide. So the goal of this treatment is to prevent the onset if you don't have it yet. And if you do have it, is to halt the progression and then separately improve the symptoms. Um, you know, separate effect of improving the symptoms. But we want to halt the progression, stop the damage. So we can use it with all the FDA approved medications. And we're going to start slow and go, uh, start low and go slow. And then for the same reasons you heard, uh, we want to get to this sweet spot. If you don't give enough medication, it's not doing anything at all. And you've you heard some explanation of that the U shaped curve. And then when you get to where you're having an effect, you really can't increase your, your dose a whole lot more after that before it starts actually going back down and reversing and having less effect. So it's, a, it's very unusual in that regard. So you want to find that sweet spot. Uh, for Alzheimer's, we want, uh, we want cannabis that's one to one CBD with THC. That, that's in our, our bedtime doses. What, and it's really easy with dispensaries these days to find a, a strain or a tincture that's one to one or close to one to one. And uh, then you reevaluate. 
Some docs reevaluate and start changing the dose every three to five days. The first visit, I actually wait two weeks. I see them and could be two solid weeks before we start bumping up the dose. Uh, I really, especially in naive patients, patients that, that had never smoked marijuana or used marijuana before, you want to give them a couple weeks to learn and titrate and, and go through the experiences and then uh, have to come back in and then you can start having them change their dose every three to five days until we get to the right dose. Next slide. <clears throat> so um, there are several tools out there to measure your baseline cognitive functioning. Cognitive functioning just means your memory, your uh, ability to make decisions, your judgment. So there are some tools that I'll mention in one, in one of the last slides. You go out there, you do the test, and that will tell you what your score is. And then we follow up this test with a repeat test after three months of medication. And we want to make sure it's not getting worse, because then the medication's not doing what it's supposed to do. There's more damage going on. Um, the score may improve a little bit, but in general, once you have the damage, once you have damage and it's causing symptoms, uh, you have a very exceptional case, put it that way. So my goal is to find them early because uh, you, you don't always get the success factors, I guess, uh, in, with that level of symptoms. Very good. Um, okay, so uh, again, so the reversal symptoms is temporary usually. Here's the dosing. Uh, for, uh, unless they're very elderly or really concerned about getting high, you start with a 2.5 milligram dose of the THC. So remember, we're dealing with one-to-one -one cannabis or edible or tincture uh, or uh, smoked marijuana. Uh, then to get more CBD, we, we, we move up uh, 2.5 milligrams. You want to get to a maximum of 10 milligrams of THC per dose. And then that's once a day. And you can go up to do the same thing up to twice a day, and then you can go all the way up to three times a day. So three doses of 10 milligrams each up to 30 milligrams a day of THC. That, that's, THC is the thing we worry about and we follow. And very few patients need more than 30 milligrams of THC. Most of them are around five milligrams to 10 milligrams once a day. Um, and that's because, okay, next slide. Well, this, this is talking about the, these are the two tests that are out there. You just Google that SAGE or the Nemozole. Yeah, you do it yourself. It's not the test that your doctor does to determine your level of function. It's your own test. Repeat it after three months. Change the dose in response to the test scores. Once you're at the correct dose, just, you just need to retest once a year. I start with elderly patients. I start with 1.25 milligrams of the THC just because it's a tiny dose, it's probably not doing anything, but it's dealing with their anxieties about taking, you know, reefer, reefer madness. <laughs> um, next slide. Okay, so I, I have to say this, because most patients that on, uh, with Alzheimer's are taking FDA-approved drugs, you really want them to work with their medical professional. 95% of doctors uh, know less about cannabis than you now know after these three doctors. Uh, so they may not work with you. And so there's some websites I'll, I'll mention where you can find a doctor that will work with you um, and, um, and then still go to your regular doctor to get your FDA approved meds, but you can go to you know, a, a more compassionate doctor to help you get your cannabis, get your dosing right. Um, so let's see, the, the vaporized CBD, that, that's the, uh, the low THC, high CBD. It's 15 to one, 18 to one, sometimes 20 to one vaporizers. It's essentially pure CBD. Um, you, you can vaporize that throughout the day. You, you almost can't take too much CBD. So uh, I'm going to say most patients I deal with is every two to four hours that they're hitting their vape to get more CBD, but not getting high because there's no THC in their vaporizer. It's only in their, their edible bedtime medicine. Okay, in preventive dosing, we're going to hear a lot more. Dr. Uh, Ethan Rousseau was way ahead of himself. It was 2004 when he came up with the idea of endocannabinoid deficiency. Things like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, uh, uh, some of the uh, psychological, psychiatric diagnoses. He feels are due to our body literally not having enough cannabinoids. So um, a preventive dose 
theoretically of 2.5 to 5 milligrams, that's THC within four miles of CBD once a day, will probably prevent a whole slew of conditions. Autoimmune disease, arthritis, arthritis, uh, dementias, Alzheimer's, uh, some people have some cancer preventive. So uh, anyone over 50 here, in my opinion, 2016 should be considering taking a once a day dose of 2.5 milligrams THC and CBD as preventive. Uh, let's keep going. Oh, this is just we mentioned that. So what it's doing is it's it's reducing all these smoldering diseases in our in our body before we even know we have them. So uh, here's some of the examples: cancer, autoimmune diseases, arthritis, and um, this is an exciting area. But there's almost no research. Next slide. Uh, next slide. No, 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 